So there's a few differences with the Sony a7 IV, but I've been a Sony shooter for years now and have adapted for me the best like run and gun settings to switch back and forth from. So that way I'm never missing a shot in any situation that I personally want to control. As a creator who switches environments all the time and is constantly using my camera in different lighting situations and, and scenarios, I can sympathize with anybody that watches this video and recorded in multiple rooms from like slow motion to just like regular cinematic 4K and they go back to review the footage and something's off and they're constantly wondering like what settings could I use to go back and forth from these shooting situations the most fluent and easiest way possible without ruining the footage with keeping the footage similar across all ways of shooting. Today we're going to dive into those settings for me. I use these settings for my personal day-to-day -day vlog videos like this. I even use these settings for my professional self from anywhere that involves product shots all the way to corporate and wedding films. These are my run and gun settings for the Sony a7 IV. Diving into this today, I'm obviously doing these settings without a lens, so some things are gonna be different. But one thing you'll notice with the Sony a7 IV is they've also adapted this awesome little additional dial to go back and forth from photo to video to S and Q mode. Now for anybody who's been missing out on S and Q mode throughout the years, S and Q mode is a way to switch into a slow motion state. So for the a7 IV, for example, you would switch into your 4K 60p and you would actually get that slow motion footage straight out of the camera. Versus when you set the video in your settings to be 4K 60 or 120p and you record and everything plays back at a normal rate and then you slow it down in post. S and Q is a great way to just have that buttery, super slow motion footage straight out of the camera. So in itself, this little dial right here that Sony has added with the a7 IV already helps just a little bit more with that run and gun mentality. Now, typically I'll have it on the manual dial here and then one, two, and three will play a role here in a second. And then I just kind of switch back and forth from photo to video when I need. So the first thing that I do in my Sony camera is I always set up color. So if you go down to the exposure and color menu on this left tab over here, go all the way down to color slash tone. I personally shoot in a PP8 profile, which is a S log three. It's just the standard S log three profile. I do plan on putting out a video on how I color correct and color grade my S log three footage. So let me know in the comments down below if that's something you'd be interested in. Also too, I wanted to take a quick reminder, remind you guys to like, comment and subscribe and turn on those notifications for the channel. So that way you can support me for free and push us into the YouTube algorithm. And on top of that, if you guys would like to join the members club on this channel, supporting us each and every month to do special benefits and giveaways back to you amazing people, feel free to do so. And in today's video, I wanted to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of the channel for the month. You too can become a sponsor as well by clicking that join button underneath the video. Anyways, diving back into this, uh, again, I use S log three. Now, obviously you guys could use S Cinetone or whatever color profile that you would personally want to use. I just like to shoot everything in S log three. So the first thing I do is I come into camera and I make sure I have that set. Now, what I typically do right away when I get a new Sony camera is I set up my recall. So if you guys don't know, the one, two, three dials at the top of the camera, they play a huge role in a lot of creators, including myself. And what these are is programmable presets that you can set up that will automatically change to specific settings that you set. So program one is high quality 4K cinematic setting. Program two is my 4K 60P setting. And program three for the a 7 IV is a high quality 1080 120 FPS setting. If I do want that ultra smooth slow motion and then while I'm editing the video, I can just upscale that for something like YouTube. Obviously for this camera, that would be fine. I would just use the Sony FX3 for a more higher quality 4K k slow motion if i needed to make 4k content so how i set up my recalls is i go into my menu button right here the first thing i do is i set up my 4k option so i go to image quality file format and i make sure that i'm in xavc si 4k from there i hit the menu button go to my movie settings and make sure i'm in 24p once i pick my recording frame rate i go back and i set on my camera for a, a more neutral shot in that mode so what i'll do is i'll make sure my shutter 
shutter speed is at 1 50th because you wanna have your shutter speed double whatever frame rate you're recording at to make it look as natural as possible. In this scenario for run and gun use, I would much rather trust the camera's ability to use ISO and color. So what I do is I hit C1 and I set my white balance to auto and I go to ISO and set my ISO to auto as well. Now take in mind, this is just what I do over the years. I've learned how to adjust and change these settings very fast if I need to, if like I'm in an environment where clearly the auto white balance doesn't work. This is where you personally could change the ISO to be a default to your liking or again, the white balance as well. Personally, me, if I'm switching back and forth between modes, I like to just make sure it's on auto. So that way, if I have to switch from 4K to slow-mo, like quick in a pinch, I know that at least the camera did a better job at making those adjustments for me. In 2021, these Sony cameras do an amazing job in low light and in color. So feel free to trust them. Typically, if I had a lens, I'd be able to adjust my f-stop. But obviously, since I have no lens on this camera for today's video, it says that I can't adjust it. So once I've dialed in my settings for this 4K mode that I want, like if I wanna switch to this 4K mode here and I'm ready to go, I want to set that recall. So what I do is I hit the menu button here I make sure I'm in my shooting menu. I go all the way down to shooting mode here. I hit over and I go to camera set memory. Once you click that button, it will bring up this menu here. One, two, three, and then M1, M2, M3, M4. Now what these are is one, two, and three correlates to one, two, and three at the top. And then on top of that, you can use M1, M2, M3, M4 to go into this menu here and select them via that way if you wanna make additional presets. One, two, and three for me throughout all these years has worked really well. So I have and personally found a need to use those. So what I do from here is I set up my main 4K cinematic display for preset one. So at this point, I would want to hit okay in the menu. Now I already have all these set up, so I don't want to change anything. So now you can go switch to the one on the dial and you would automatically go to those settings that you just made. Now what you're gonna wanna do to change two and three is you're gonna wanna go back to the M dial or make sure that you're selected on manual. You're gonna wanna go to your menu, go back up to your image quality, if you have the memory card for it, select your 4K, go into your movie settings, and then go to 60P. From there, you're going to want to back out and select your shutter speed according again to double the frame rate of whatever selection that you're making. Again, color, white balance, auto, ISO, auto. My f-stop would be set to whatever lens that I have. Once I got the frame rate set to double whatever recording mode I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go to menu, once again, go back to the shooting screen, go to shooting mode, camera set memory, and then I'm going to go to two because I want to program 4K 60p for my second dial. And now I'm set up for 4K 24p and 4K 60p through one and two. I think you guys are kind of getting the hint here. So again, we'll just fly through this one. So to set program three, I'm gonna make sure I'm in manual, go back to image quality, go to file format. For this one, I'm going to go XAVC SHD. I'm gonna to go to movie settings. I'm gonna select 120p. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go back. I'm going to make sure that white balance is auto, ISO is auto. I'm gonna make sure the shutter speed is double the frame rate. I'm gonna hit menu again. I'm gonna go back to shooting mode. I'm gonna go down to shooting mode. I'm gonna hit camera, set memory, and then I'm going to program this for three. And that right there is how you set up the recall to go back and forth from 4K 24P to 4K 60P to, to 1080, 120 FPS in a pinch. Now what I like to do for the A7 IV is whatever my main shooting mode is, so for me it's 4K 24P, that's what I shoot the majority of my content with. I like to go back to the M dial or shooting on manual right there. And I like to make sure that I'm set up for that mode specifically. And this is where most of the time the camera sits in that mode, in that movie mode right there at 24P. And if I'm in my office and I know I'm gonna be recording X amount in here all day, I'm probably just gonna set the color temperature. Usually with me, it's 5,500. And then the ISO to whatever I need to for this office specifically. And then I'll just be in that dial all day long. So that way it's not auto shooting. And then again, if I leave this room and I go somewhere else and I wanna get smooth B-roll, that's where I would switch those dials. I do wanna point out that S and Q mode is going to depend on the, the card that you have. So for example, my FX3 to get the highest quality, the highest slow motion possible, 
for whatever settings I have, I have a Sony Tough Card. Those are really expensive right now. But for the Sony a7 IV and my Sony a7S III, I just use the 300 megabyte per second transfer speed. And that typically would work with most situations besides a ultra smooth 4K. I believe if you're gonna set your S and Q, you need to make sure you're on XAVCS 4K and not SI 4K and set your S and Q dial that way, unless you have a Sony Tough card. So last thing I like to do with my run and gun settings is work on, on autofocus. Again, we're not gonna be able to get into full details today because I don't have a lens on this camera right now. But if you go into menu and head over to the left and go all the way down to AF slash MF, you go over and in your focus modes, transition speed, subject shift sensitivity, all those, I personally just go on, on high. I know some people don't like that, like AI snap focus, but for me and the content that I create, I like to have it because if I don't want a snap fast focus, like getting the shot for sure, I usually just switch over to manual mode and then I control my focus that way. I'm just the type of person likes to use as much of the camera software to get the shot and know that I have the shot and then just like work with other settings when I need to. From there, I make sure I go to peaking display. And this is a big one that's really helped me throughout the years as I make sure that I have peaking display on, I set my my peaking level to high and my peaking color to white. And what this will do is in your display, it will actually add a little color around the specific parts of your video footage that is being focused. It's great once again to use as an autofocus or as a manual focus to really dial in the focus and the contrast of certain objects will pick up the little white detail to know that you are in focus. From there, switching over to camera dial because I am using this a lot more for photo. But again, having that dial in itself is just a great way to switch back and forth. I go into menu image quality and I just make sure that I'm set to roll personally three, two for me. And that's pretty much it for like the run and gun stuff. I really, through the last few cameras, aside from like, other menu options that maybe I'll put in a later video. It's kind of like the boring stuff, like just changing C3, C4 and stuff like that to work better for me, especially switching back and forth between time lapses, for example. But throughout the last few years, when it comes to cameras, I know that there's a, a crap ton of stuff in the menus and I adapt over time to using certain new features and whatnot. But for the most part, I just utilize the tools that I need to use I program those, I set them, and I get my shot. I worry about other things aside from the camera. You know, like turning on everything here today, you actually see me record X amount of time for this video, but you guys didn't see me setting up all the lights and everything for the shots. So when it comes to run and gun, these are the settings that I use. And if I'm going to actually set up a shot in a more professional landscape, I switch typically to manual settings and I set up the entire shot for that shot in itself. All right, guys, hopefully today's video helped in some way, shape or form. Let me know if you guys already knew about a lot of these features and you already utilized them for you and your content. And I also actually seen in the recent video that a lot of you guys are thinking about snagging the a7 IV or waiting on yours to come in. And I'm curious, did some of you guys finally pull the trigger? Are you guys finally getting your bodies in? My boy Jayhawk just got his in today. I, I'm really pumped about this camera because judging from a lot of creators, it's like that 35 versus 2,500 price point, like $2,500 for this. I'm seeing a lot more people finally upgrading. It's like a lot of people couldn't really justify upgrading their kits to a Sony a7S III or FX3, for example. And like this $2,500 camera, the a7 IV is finally that thing. They're like, okay, now, now I can afford to upgrade. So I think a lot of people are gonna be snagging this camera, but you guys let me know in the comments down below. If there's anything you guys would like to see from me in the future, let me know as well in the comments down below. Make sure you guys are liking, commenting, subscribing, turning on those notifications and joining the members club today to support the channel. That's all I got for you guys today. I'm out, peace, deuces.